Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to another LEGO Train Mock Showcase video. This is the Bullied Pacific West Country class upgraded to 7 studs wide. What a glow up this model has had. So, the previous incarnation at 6 studs wide looked very different to this. It is uncanny, it's genuinely unbelievable to see like the two different models next to each other. Obviously I can't do that because it got rebuilt into this. But looking at the pictures, wow, just wow. The boiler is so much longer. The tender is quite similar, but definitely up to date and looks so much more better. And overall, it's just a glorious build. Not the best creation and definitely not the way I would kind of really want it to be. But at the same time, I'm not going to really try and change this because it does look really good. I'm so pleased with myself. Ah, so good. Now then, this is normally the time where we go straight into the review and have a quick look at the model, but I want to quickly announce something. I want your thoughts on the drive wheels. I don't intend to change this because changing this will be costly. I doubt you can even see this, but anyway, these are XXL drive wheels. These are 3D printed wheels that I've had for years and decided to upgrade this just as a way of using these wheels. I went back and forth on using these and I thought about maybe getting one size down where it would kind of look a little bit better but at the same time it costs a hell of a lot to be able to do that. So what do you think about the wheels? Do you think the size of it works? Can you actually see them? I hope so. If you can't then please let me know. Lighting is always a real problem in this room because of how this room is set up. Especially today where it's nice and sunny so once we've got beautiful lighting here today all these black parts because there's a lot of black details as well on this model it can be quite difficult to see. So, two minutes in, let's actually have a look at this thing. So I say that and we have more black sections. Don't worry, there's no detail there, you could just see the face of the boiler and the golden buffers. I think all of my 7 wide locomotives are going to have um, golden buffers because I kind of treasure them more than I have previous models. That's pretty good. These cylinders, difficult to see, I think we've got a good angle there. There we go, I actually see these. These were interesting to build because for the past few models I've used Technic pieces. But these are 1x2 pieces with the kind of hole in them. As you can see I've got a Technic bar running through there. So I've used this for another few models in the past, most notably is the P2. And it's a great use here as well. It's actually quite remarkable how you can use those bricks for this de uh, design detail. I don't know how many other people even try this, it's not exactly easy. But it's a good thing to give a try for. I mean, if you have those bricks, seriously, give it a go. I think you can really pull it off. Going to the sides of the boiler now. These are angled slope tiles and uh, not bricks. What's the word I'm looking for? Plates, that's it. Inside, it is a bit complicated. Whilst I could remove the roof of the boiler, it's a bit of a hassle to put back on. All very delicate and fragile. This looks so much better because on the real model, the sides of the boiler are flat, but they angle downwards. Unlike the six wide version of this that I built previously in the past, where they are kind of 90 degree per, uh, what's the word, adjacent? Well, I don't know, I don't use, uh, I don't use big words, but you know, it was cubic in shape, basically. Let's go with that. This looks so much nicer again, it's more accurate, it looks really smooth as well, with the tiles you can see, obviously where each tile kind of breaks up, you see that's 4 wide, that's an 8 wide. A bit annoying, and I haven't been able to really use the yellow stripes all the way across either. I was thinking about rebuilding this to use bricks to allow me to do that. But ultimately I skipped it because I wasn't too sure how to do the smoke deflectors here at the front. These are an interesting design because it is just a little smoke deflector that sticks outwards from the rest of the side of the boiler. But ultimately, it works much better than I thought it would. The top of the boiler as well looks so much smoother, much cleaner. It's 5 wide where it was previously 6 wide again. Into the same size as the sides of the boiler. And all in all, really good. I'm going to move this forward. Just a moment of taking this in when you actually see it move. So nice, yes. Oh yeah, real quick. The drive rods were originally going to be in grey, but turns out I don't have enough grey parts for that. I could do this bit, but not this bit. 
I'll have to get some more parts in the future. So, we now come to the cab and tender areas. All ready. Whilst this is a nice looking boiler, there isn't that much else to really show you. All the details on top where the safety valves and the cylinders and the um, whistle is. It's all nicely tucked in, there's nothing really standing out, which is again a good thing for a design like this. Oh, speaking of, this isn't streamlined. The appropriate term that I learned a few weeks ago is called air smoothed. A streamlined design is something like Mallard, for example, where it has that streamlined look at the front of the boiler. This is just air smoothed, which is a little self-explanatory, kind of makes sense because obviously it's smooth inside when it's picking up speed. It will be able to maintain that speed, but it's not as fast as something that is properly streamlined. Does that make sense? I hope so. My brain hasn't been working well today, so yeah, this is all you're going to get. I haven't recorded videos in a while as well, so that probably explains why. Anyway, the cab section is about the same size as it was previously again, but there's nothing really going on in there. I think we got internal details here. Just peeking inside with my head, just breaking my neck at a certain angle. There are details in there, but taking off the tender to be able to see inside is a bit of a problem because this is the same design that I used for my Flying Scotsman. These wheels are connected to the same base where there's an articulation point here and here. So why did I do that? It's mainly the tender's fault. Just trying to get a good enough angle where you can see it clearly. Yeah, I think that'll do. So these wheels are currently two studs apart from each other. On a rigid base, you're not going to be able to get away with it because going around corners and points, it will just derail. If the centre wheel was blind, then you could get away with it. But for this wheel design, they're all flanged and that creates a problem. The only way to get around it is to add a pivot point somewhere. I decided to put it on the front set of wheels, so it's not flopping around too much when it's pulling coaches or any other rolling stock. And especially when it's going around those corners on points. So I decided to copy the design idea I used for the Flying Scotsman and use the trailing wheels underneath the cab to be a rigid unit with the front wheels of the tender. It works very smoothly going over cabs and points like a charm. The only problem I have when it comes to actually potentially derailing is the size of the drive wheels themselves. Going over points is a bit of a nightmare because with how it turns these back wheels kick up a little bit. If you're going slowly and you're pushing down, it does stay on. But the fact that it still does that is a bit of a problem. But again, nothing really to concern myself over. So back to the tender. The tender is a better looking tender, but not too much different. The coal bed kind of sits one tile higher than it was previously. Come on camera, focus, you can do this. No, the camera doesn't want to play nice, I do apologise. But basically, if you look at it side on, you can see the black section. Where previously, you only just could be able to, but even then it was still slightly difficult. Along the back, we also have these four cylinders. No idea what they do. From all the pictures that I've seen, they do look to be cylinders. I don't know if they're one kind of solid piece, but that's just the shape they've been given. But even then, I'm not too sure what they actually do. And there is another cylinder here, which I believe is the kind of opening... What's the word I'm looking for? God, my brain. I hate my brain so much. Basically, the cover hole for where you would store the water in the tender, basically, yeah. Uh, but, ooh, lighting has changed. It's gone dark all of a sudden. Oh, you can actually see this a lot better, all the black parts. Oh, that's amazing. See what I mean? What a weird video this has become. But anyway, yes, that's the tender. It looks quite nice, quite elegant. It's... Pretty much the same thing as it was previously, just a little bit longer. Oh, actually, I almost forgot. Down here, you can kind of see it. No, the camera still isn't behaving. It wants the light back. Anyway, these, just along here, are 2x4 slope bricks. These are the same bricks I use for the boilers of my locomotives. And that is because on the tender, you can see that at the bottom, it curves upward slightly. Trying to get that on a wheelbase that had an articulation point took so much longer than it should have and I'm quite embarrassed about it because with all the trains and tenders I've built over the years that is something I should have been able to make pretty quickly but it took me all morning, literally hours playing with the wheels, trying to figure out what's what and it's just, 
it works now, but again, it's just thinking back to it, knowing how long it took, is really embarrassing. Ah, so there we go. We are done. My brain hates me, and I hate my brain because talking is something I'm not good at, and yet I make videos on YouTube about LEGO trains that I have built. Hopefully you can still tolerate me, and hopefully you like this model. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you all ever so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye.